Hey guys, I'm continuing work on the Admiral TV. I decided that I would just go ahead and test all the tubes. And I discovered that they are all Admiral branded except for three of the six AG5s, which are all Sylvania. They also all test good, and they all test about the same, which again makes me think they are the original tubes to the set and this is a fairly low hour set. So I'm going to pop them all back in now and then continue on with troubleshooting the vertical section. I think I will pull out the voltage chart from the SAM service info, grab a VTVM and do some voltage checking on those tubes. If you recall the vertical height was uh, less than it should be. I started doing some voltage checks and found a problem right away. Pin 3 and 4 on the 6K6 vertical output tube should be 300 volts. But I've only got... a little over 200. Like 210, 215 or so. So, something's not right there. Now, where does that voltage come from? Well, pins 3 and 4 go to the vertical output transformer, primary goes over here, we got an electrolytic cap filter, and a 10K resistor, and then it goes to this, which goes to a connector on the power supply. So, could be an issue on the power supply, so I should probably go through and check those. It's kind of annoying though, they don't tell you what the voltage should be on those pins on that power supply connection. There's no label anywhere here on the schematic about what this voltage should be here. But uh, I can certainly check that resistor. If it uh, had increased in value, it would certainly be cutting the voltage down, that's for sure. The 10K resistor was measuring a little bit high, almost 12K. And that's 5% tolerance, so that was out of spec, so I replaced that. And uh, then I checked the 20 microfarad electrolytic capacitor down in here, and I got leakage on the highest range on my capacitor tester. Now that's a 450 volt rated cap, and I was getting leakage at around 400 volts. So uh, I temporarily tacked a new one in. So between the higher than, you, than should be resistor, and a leaky cap. I'm hoping that's what was dragging down the voltage, so let's find out. Let's see, that was over here. Oops, there's another crown on top. Well, I'll tell it definitely had an effect because now I have no vertical hold. Well, it's higher, but still not 300. It's maybe uh, 20 volts or so, maybe 30 volts higher than it used to be. So the height cranked out all the way. Well, that height is about right, but I don't like the fact that I have the control completely maxed out to get there. Uh, now I was wondering about the power supply, and uh, you know maybe the maybe the problem lies over here. Well, it turns out that that plug. I was wondering what the voltage should be here. Well, that's the main supply coming right off of here. And they still don't mark the voltage on this, but I do know what the voltage is supposed to be on pin 8 on that 5U4, which is V27. That uh, should be 380 volts DC. 
So uh, it's not so easy to get at, but maybe I'll put an octal tube extender on the rectifier tube so I can check what the voltage is there. Because if the voltage is wrong all the way back here, of course every voltage in the set's going to be wrong. These tube extenders are really handy to have when working in tight quarters when you can't get underneath the chassis very easily. So, pin 8 should be 380 volts. We're a little low. And I'm running off of Variac, so I can uh, turn it up a little bit. Because I have it turned down a kind of low. It says 104 on here, but I don't know how accurate that really is. But I'll just turn it up a little bit. A little too much. Drop it down a tad. Hmm. That's pretty, uh, pretty close to 380. So now we know that the power supply is right, so everything after that should be alright. Now back over here. And we're at 250, so that's still 50 volts shy of where we should be at. So, what could be causing that? Well, I mean, we have 380 here, I presume. Let me double check that. Yeah, more or less. And then the other side is lower than where it should be. So, the only way that can happen is if there's drawing more current than it should be. This, you know, the voltage over here seems to be okay, but on this side it's too low. So that's why I was thinking if this cap was leaky, be pulling more current than it should through here, which would drop more voltage, but now that's a new cap, so. What else could be the issue? Well, this tube could be off a little bit. Uh, might be drawing more current than it should be. So the biasing might be off on it. So I'll work back a little bit to maybe check uh, voltages on this tube. Oh, I should also probably check the obvious, which is the height control. Make sure that pot's all right, including this 1.2 meg uh, on that control. Here's the height control, and it measured okay. One leg of that goes through a 470k resistor to ground, and that was measuring about 30% high, so I replaced it. And it's also hooked up to a 1.2 meg resistor that was also about 20% high. Replace that. Really didn't have too much effect. Maybe added a few more volts to that uh, point I've been checking. So, pretty much only leaves one thing, which is all these nasty old paper caps, which I knew I was going to have to replace at some point. So, I guess I'll start uh, clipping the ends of these one by one and testing them and replace the ones that are bad. I'm checking this cap right now. Should be good up to 600 volts. Shocking, we have leakage. So, let's try another cap. This one should be for 400 volts. Shocking, we have leakage. A lot of leakage on this one. The faster the light flashes, the more leakage you've got. So, if you're going to use a capacitor tester like this, always put it back to zero before you start grabbing these clips like this or you will get shocked. Alright, that is rated for 400 volts. That's what the last yellow stripe means. Shocking. Very bad leakage. So, uh, I'm actually surprised that the set works as well as it does with these caps being so leaky. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> I'll get to it. I'll clip out a few more and test them, but uh, I suspect that most, if not every, paper cap in this set 
is going to be leaky. Just for the heck of it, here's a couple more caps. This should be good for 400 volts. Yeah, I don't think so. It's the leakiest cap so far. And finally this little bugger down here. Uh, let's see, what's that rated for? 600 volts. Hey, we got one good capacitor in this thing. Or at least doesn't have leakage. Didn't actually check the. Oh, wait. Oh, spoke too soon. It's not very leaky, but it's leaky. This is why I shotgun caps normally. <laughs> because they're all bad. And they always are. I replaced all those bad paper caps on the vertical oscillator and output tube, and that did the trick. Plenty of height now. Vertical hold kind of stinks now, though. At least if I make it screen full height, but then again, you would never have it like that anyways. It should be something more like that. Alright, so, that's that. Oh, and I measured the voltage on that pin, and it is close to 300 volts now. So. Alright. Now what? Um, the thing that's so crazy about it is there's a... The picture is not as good as it seemed like it was earlier. I got some snow on there. But yeah, maybe I should save that for the last. Probably... Needs an alignment. Um, well, the screen's too wide, as I was saying earlier. That uh, because the set has a rectangular mask, it's going to be cutting it off, something like that. So the picture sh is quite a bit wider than it should be. So now that we've played around with the vertical, how about we take a look at the horizontal? So it'll be this stuff down in here. In particular, I want to take a look at this stuff. So it's, it's pretty critical stuff on a TV set. And uh, if this goes bad, uh, bad things can happen like burning up the flyback or horizontal output tube and so on. So uh, let's start checking those resistors. And might as well just go ahead and replace those paper caps too. I just finished working down in this area which is all this stuff. Horizontal sync uh, discriminator, horizontal oscillator control, horizontal oscillator, horizontal discharge, horizontal output. I replaced all the paper caps and uh, quite a few resistors were a bit high. Not horribly but uh, more than 20 percent so I just wanted to go ahead and replace them. Now this is a horizontal uh, oscillator coil and that's what I had to tweak when I first powered this up to get to horizontally lock and I had to turn it quite a bit now that I've recapped this I expect we're going to turn it again quite a bit to get to lock onto the signal so let's see what we got so I'm hoping the horizontal sync will be a little bit better and, uh, and maybe the width will be reduced because it really shouldn't be Full screen width. Alright, well, that's a good sign. This set powered back up, and I have an image of sorts. So, not surprisingly, it's uh, kind of a mess. So I'm going to try adjusting that coil. See if we can get this thing to lock. I think we're getting closer. Yes. So let's I 
What a sound. That's happened a few times before. There seems to be some intermittent problem with uh, I don't know if it's fine tuning or what, but I've completely lost sound now. Other times it's been a little weak. So there'll be something else to poke around with. So as far as the width goes, no, still have full width. So that didn't help any. And the vertical hold's a bit crappy. I haven't uh, worked on that part of the circuit yet. Vertical oscillator, yes, but not the sink separator that feeds it. Uh, horizontal sinks rock solid. I'm rotating the horizontal hold control and I can go through its full range without losing sink, which is great. Another common problem is that can happen. When you change channels and go back, you lose sink. Definitely got to fix that vertical hold prop. I can't get a vertical lock at all now. That's quite irritating. Okay, I finished recapping the vertical stuff. All that was left was a little bit of work down in here. So, time for yet another power up test. Let's see if we have better vertical hold now. I would say yes, we do. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to adjust the control now and see. Oh, yeah. Much better. Right in the center of the control, we get stable lock. I can rotate the control a fair amount. And uh, I get lock in the center. And to one extreme, it rolls one way. Other extreme. Uh, actually, I can't even get it to unlock the other way hmm you know as the set's warming up actually problems are starting to creep in again now I have to have the control all the way to one extreme and the picture is still starting to roll. So something's definitely happening as the set runs for a while. So I did not solve the problem yet. Just turn it off and try that again. So something uh, must be drifting as it heats up. Let this cool down for a minute or so and then turn it back on. Yeah, so vertical hold is fine when I first turn the set on. Rotate the control either way from center, rolls one way than the other way. Now as the set warms up, starts rolling. I can adjust it a little bit, stops rolling. And it starts rolling again. goes again. Alright, so and I got the control all the way at one extreme. I cannot get it to lock anymore. Alright, so the investigation will continue. I checked and double checked all the components in the vertical oscillator and back up through to the sync amplifier, inverter, and all that stuff and everything seemed to be okay and nothing I tried was making any improvement whatsoever to the vertical after a minute or so it would start rolling and I just could not get a lock anymore 
And I thought, well, why don't I try swapping out the, hors the uh, sorry, vertical oscillator tube? And that's when I uh, determined was weak earlier, the 6SN7. So I just swapped it with uh, another 6SN7 used elsewhere in the set, and now I got vertical lock back right in the center of the control like it should be. So I can get it to roll in either direction just like it's supposed to. So I gotta to put that tube back in my tester. Perhaps the tube, the bad tube I replaced with a seemingly good tube, maybe that tube, uh, tube has developed a problem just in the uh, few hours I've had it powered up on the bench. I don't know. Uh, you know, and I have heard from uh, a few of the old uh, service techs that the only true test of a tube is to try it in a set. And maybe even if that tube does test good in the tester, in this particular application, it might have a problem. In fact, it just occurred to me, I'm trying to remember to show you on the tester, is that for 2 buck to 6 sn 7 there are actually three cards in it. Uh, yeah, let's just go over and do it right now. All right, so here's that 6SN7 that I put into the set. Just coincidentally happened to be an Admiral. It's a used tube, but it tested good. Now, in this tester, it actually has three cards for the 6SN7. When I tested it, I'm pretty sure I just used the first card. So, what are these three cards? Well, 6SN7 is used a lot in late 40s, early 50s designs can be used as an amplifier can be used as an oscillator can be used uh, in some other application um, not sure but uh, the point is each of these three cards is for different applications so one of them will be an amplifier, one will be an oscillator another one I think might be a multivibrator or something like that so I'm going to test this using all three cards and let's see what happens. Now I don't know which card is which. I don't have, I presume there, there's some master index that tells you which card is for what, but I don't have that. I don't see any indication on a card, I don't think, about what each card is for. I just know in the owner's manual, operator manual, it tells you that if there's more than one card, for a tube, that's what it means. It's for different modes of operation. Well, we don't have to mess around with trying different cards. Right away, first card, we've got shorts lighting up like a Christmas tree. So, this tube, which had tested good, developed faults just in a sh little bit of operation up on the test bench. Just knocking it around to see if the shorts would go away, and yeah, they did. So, must be some junk floating around inside the tube. Making an intermittent short. Just notice the base is loose too, so I'm not going to mess with this tube anymore. I'll just pull out another one. I just popped in a CBS Hydron branded 6SN7GT. Let's see, let's test. Good. Not so good. Alright. Let's go to another one. It's an RCA Jan Joint Army Navy tube. So it must have been part of some military contract. Let's give that guy a try. Ooh, looks like a nice strong tube. Alright, now I'm going to try each of the other two cards just to make sure. So here's card number two. That's good. That's good. Now finally I'll do card number three. Now an important thing to notice on this third card is OK under 50. I just take quality and I noticed it wasn't testing very good. But uh, apparently whatever mode this is using, it's OK for it to be under 50. That's what I get.
so I guess that's still good. Alright, let's see what we get now. Seems to be fine. I'll let this run for a while. Now, in the course of trying to solve this issue, I ended up replacing quite a few of the old paper caps. I think there aren't too many left in it right now, but still some issues. This is one of them. Sometimes when I adjust the fine tuning, I lose the image altogether. Like that. Tap it, it comes back. So there's still something up with this tuner. I'm going to investigate a little more closely. Might even just take it out, which isn't too difficult. Unsolder a couple wires, maybe four wires all together, undo a few screws, and the whole thing drops out. If I absolutely had to, I could even replace it, the whole thing. It's a 30A1 chassis. I have a uh, spare 30B1 uh, chassis, and I think they use the same tuner. Another problem is that the sound is just terrible, as I've mentioned before. Might be a consequence of some issue it's cropped up with the tuner. Might be an issue with uh, AGC. I have not touched any of the coils, so I don't think the alignment got off. Or it could be the audio amp, which I have not recapped or done anything with. I haven't even tested those tubes. So... Based on what I just experienced, I think I'll check those two tubes first. It's a 6SQ7 and then a 6Y6. It's a Coke bottle. I'll put two here. Alright, so that seems to have solved the vertical hold problem, at least for now. I think I'd mentioned back in part one that I noticed a blue glow in the horizontal output tube and I just thought I'd touch on that a little bit. Now it's not like there's ionized gas inside the tube, it's actually it appears to be in the surface of the glass on this side and on this side. I've seen that before in some audio output tubes. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong with the tube, it's just uh, kind of a uh, the nature of it, like stray electrons hitting the sides of the glass. Then notice it's more intense when the set first comes on. It dies down a bit. So I just turn the set off, I'll turn it back on, see if we can pick it up better. No, I have not tested this tube yet, so I think that's something that I should do. I'm doing the audio output tubes and I want to get a uh, damper tube as well I think the last tubes to test are the three inside here and these two guys I've checked the rectifier tubes already and they're okay 